thank you, everyone. And what a perfect panel discussion to follow on from our last speaker. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm Omar Oakes, editor of The Media Leader. As you can see from the board, Hannah Lloyd-Jones from Zaxis is sadly not with us today. We also actually advertised uh, Mahir from Anything Is Possible. So we're down from five to three. Um, but we've given 10 minutes back to you at the same time. Um, it's, there's still lots to talk about. And anything better, we can actually get into more depth, I'm hoping. Um, so this is about, is personalized and contextual creative worth the added cost and complexity? We've heard the creative argument for that. Let's talk about the media planning and buying side of it and tech. Um, first of all, um, let's introduce yourselves. Flora, you've been on before in the morning, but let me explain a bit about what you do. So you're head of implementation yeah. at OmniGov. OmniGov, in case you don't know, is um, Omnicom Media Group's special media buying division for the UK government. Pretty big advertiser. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do and maybe what your favorite Brexit ad is. <laughs> <laughs> that second part, I don't think I can comment. Um, so my role is basically working multimedia. Um, because the government buying is split out between planning and buying, we're the kind of first point where we see all of the plans come in as one because all the planning structure is separate. Um, so what we do is we use tools, data, insight, um, and knowledge, I hope, um, to look at what is the best media mix, what's the best role of channel, what are the best KPIs, and work with the planning agencies basically to optimize to ultimately save taxpayers money and make it more efficient. So that's my main role at the moment. Sounds good. And Emma Raz, who is Director of Commercial at Number 8. Mm -hmm. um, explain for those of you don't know, who don't know what Number 8 does and what you do. Of course, no problem. I will do my very best. Um, so Number 8 is an on-device contextual intelligence platform. What does that mean? It means that we sit within mobile devices, and I always bring my own because I take it everywhere, um, and every smartphone on this planet has a bunch of sensors built in. That is very informative and very meaningless by themselves. We are the technology and the basically data layer that enables to translate them into meaningful insights. For example, that we're currently indoors, we're in a working environment, we are also socializing, um, the level of crowdness, um, and so on and so forth. I believe it's quite sunny outside, quite good weather. A lot of that information um, can be accessed directly on the device without any personal identification. Um, so personalization without being getting personal, basically, um, precisely. Um, and that is exactly what we do. And me, number eight, well, I'm just in charge of the commercial part. Good, I like that. Um, so let's define terms first of all, because um, I've been writing about this um, for, for years, and I still get confused when people talk about personalized advertising versus contextual advertising. What exactly is meant by that? Um, Emma, perhaps, what, what, is there a distinction without a difference here? How, do, how should we be defining it for the purpose of this conversation? Oh, that's such a good question, and I think they change all the time. So what we mean by personal really changed, because we used to think, or personal meant that we're trying to give you something which is related to you. It's relevant for you, right? That's the basic of personalization. However, it became something like we need to know everything about you and we need to know your personal information, your email, your ID, your phone number. We need to know all of that and then we might give you something which is relevant. Now it's kind of going back in time with legislation, with privacy concern, to the very core of personalization, which is just getting to know you as a person, which can also be contextualization, right? Like con your context also means a lot about who you are as a person. And use that to give you something relevant. So relevancy is at the core, and the other terms around it kind of shift with time. Um, contextualization by itself is tricky because we often mix it with content. That's not mix, it's just contextualization came from web, so it's often kind of, as a, it's an alternative to content. So you think context, you think content that people are reading. We argue that context can mean something much wider. For example, the environment, what we're doing right now. If we're traveling on a bus, if we're um, drinking, like for grabbing coffee with friends, that is our current context. And um, that has great impact to what we'll pay attention to, what will, what will be relevant for us, what we'll remember in the end. Um, from a media planning point of view, mm -hmm. does that, do, do you recognize that? Do you look at, I mean, when you're going through a plan, do you actually kind of have those terms in mind? 
Yeah, I think it's slightly different language, but same meaning, mm -hmm. ultimately, from a media perspective. So I think that personalization, generally, you would go to more personalized by the actual, so targeting the person specifically, um, demographic, age, etc. And that's what you would probably default to. Um, but the contextual part from a what that person is doing would definitely still be relevant. But then when I think about contextual layering on top, I also think about what that person is consuming. Mm -hmm. So it's like the actual, in, it's, it's not just about where they are, it's also about the content. And that's probably the biggest extra. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all linguistics, but ultimately we mean the same thing. Very, very similar. Yeah. And I think that both are really important. What you're consuming, and what you're doing at the same time. And sometimes one thing is more meaningful than another. For example, yeah. in mobile, often your environment changes quite rapidly while you're consuming the same content. So environment is much more meaningful, while on a web, on web often the content you're consuming is exactly. much more meaningful because your environment is not going to change. You're not going to move for the foreseeable future. Um, so it all depends also on the platform itself. Okay. Um, now, this, now, this issue has come up throughout the day in different panels, throughout the morning and early on this afternoon. And we've had some very good um, pitches and talks this afternoon about the creative opportunities. Um, in what, are the, what are the key criteria for you, Flora, when mm -hmm. you're deciding whether it's worth it in inverted commas, mm -hmm. whether it's something that you want to do experimentally for a brand, whether it's, uh, whether it's an, getting incremental reach for a big brand campaign that you're doing it? What are those criteria for you? Uh, there are probably quite a few things. I mean, the, it's, you start with what is the objective and the role of each media and what's the KPI? What are you trying to achieve? Um, and that's kind of the, the absolute basic. But there are other things involved which you have to consider. For example, if it was a government COVID campaign, um, timing is a factor. We were briefed weekly. Um, stuff was turned around very quickly actually but um, still you know there are certain things which you know I, I would argue that the other factor is time mm -hmm. with those which well I was, was just going to ask about. it when you're doing something that's so quick turnaround like that is there even the time to do that even though you could make the case to say well we've got local outbreaks of COVID happening in the north of England or wherever it is yeah. do you, e even if there is a strong case for doing it do you have the time only when you need to I would say in that case so if it's if it's a necessity we did it um, so when we had different tiering messages for different places, you had to get the tier right. That feels like a really long time ago now, um, luckily. Um, but yeah, if, if, it, if you have a very short amount of time, it has to be necessity. And that is unfortunately the situation because of the way which it, it takes time to set up, it takes thinking and it takes you know organisation ultimately. That is probably one of the biggest factors from a government perspective. But when we have more time, there are other things to consider, such as what value is it adding by doing it? And then you start to quantify what actually, you know, looking at previous studies or previous campaigns which we've run, we run a lot of tests and learns in order to create a bank of information to then be able to justify this kind of thing so that we can say, actually, we know that that drives, if it's contextually relevant to genre, it drives 22% more engagement or whatever it might be that will then justify the increased cost and we need to make sure that it washes its face mm. as a media planner otherwise you know we're not doing our jobs properly because ultimately you're losing taxpayers money um i want to ask emma about how the tech has changed but before i do um there was um i've forgotten her name there was a zaxis speaker <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> hannah hannah's not here um but um, there was another zaxis um tilly? this morning tilly that's it <laughs> thank you um, where she was talking about um, if your campaign is over £30,000, I think it was, they will do some dynamic creative on top for free. So, they, it, so I, I don't know if you do the same at Omnicom or similar, but it, even though there is no added cost, and Matt was saying before, there doesn't have to be added creative cost when you're yeah. paying for the voiceover guy or girl. Um, d are you saying that it's just that sheer, that is still the main barrier in terms of your internal... I think it's also, don't, you can't do it for the sake of doing it. There has to be a kind of fundamental behavioural reason why mm -hmm. you would do it in the first place. So we know that it does work. We've seen loads of studies earlier about neuroscience and connecting more with relevancy. But, you know, if you're just saying, hello, Manchester, that's not necessarily going to 
create the impact which you want. It has there has to be a reason for it. And I go back to the first ever a million ads campaign which I did, which was Deliveroo, which is a long time ago. Um, and I think that that was the right way of using it, which was about you know different times of day, different food, different weather, different food, because that is you want different things when you you're a different time of day, different day of week, etc. And that's just a human insight, and that's what sometimes we're missing with this, which I think we need to always consider. Okay, um, so we've talked a bit about the cost. What about the complexity? I mean, Emma, going back to 2019 before pandemics and when prime ministers used to brush their hair um, <laughs> in the before times. What, I mean, how has the technology changed in the last three years in terms of the complexity? What can you do now before we get into whether it's worth doing? Brilliant question. Um, and you're welcome. <laughs> um, and the thing is, I think we're already on this journey of the technology, and I think it's, it started way before the... Um, pandemic and I think that the pandemic increased the use of audio so and um, we might have seen a spike of like let's get it done and push for it now because there are so many more people using it and especially with the rise of we've heard earlier today people are using it's mostly like digital audio is a big part of audio and consumption and mobile phones play a huge part of it um, and within mobile phone we constantly see endless development. Look at how frequently we get a new release of a mobile device, how much the technology has evolved, the hardware has evolved, and what it really means. Now, there has been technology, I think we've all spoken about a million hours, you guys are doing great. Um, today, they're fantastic and they obviously enable quite a lot, that's one area of the development. On top of it, things that I spoke about earlier, using the device themselves, what they can tell us, how they can work for us, how can they inform us about what people really need and how then we can leverage that in a meaningful way. So Flora just mentioned, if we just say, hey, like Manchester, is that contextual, is that meaningful enough? So for some people, for some ads, yes, for yeah. some ads, no. Um, and it's all about who I am as a person, right? So if you, I mean, we were asked, I remember, at least a half a year ago, how would you sell an ad to liquid laggers? So how would you get Li people... Liquid what? Sorry. Liquid laggers are people who use still, like, washing detergents, like liquid la washing detergents, and how you will get people to move to using right. capsules, right? Like, how do you do that, for example? Um, and the, every ad we've all seen so far has been always targeting, usually, moms. Um, so you see an ad with a mum and um, like white t-shirt and that t-shirt, like the, t the child t-shirt gets dirty and they tell the mum, look, it's all clean now. Now, not all of us are mums um, and other people need to do laundry. For example, if you're talking to people, guys that um, exercise a lot, they probably will respond to something more of like after the gym, like, like you need to like do laundry real quick, like chug it, like just chug it in the, in the wash. Me, I'm a pet owner. A lot of people in this audience will actually know my dog. Um, <laughs> so I will probably connect if you show me like a whole like paw print or something on my clothes. I'm like, yes, that's my husky. Um, and this will be something that I can emotionally connect to. So it's all about finding the right information and then tailoring the message to kind of create it. And that's also the, develop the development of technology we now have a technology that enables us to do so. So we can take it much further. So like basically, day part targeting 2.0. Mm. Um, we not only know what time of day it is and what you're most likely to do, we know that you're probably waiting for your kids outside of school, because we know. Um, or we can know that you're instead just chilling at home, and therefore we don't need to put you in a box. Your behavior creates the box for you. Your behavior tell us, tells us who you are. What's the rule of thumb floor for, uh, I'm, I'm mindful about frequency and bombardment, mm. I mean, in terms of all the creative opportunities there are, what's your rule of thumb in terms of how much different creative you can have before it gets creepy, shoving ads down different people's throat? There's definitely a, a frequency cap which you want to calculate over time, which would be dependent on the platform. So radio would be a different frequency, average frequency to digital audio to, as in streaming, to podcasts, because, you know, if you, if you buy into the same podcast, 
you, if, you're a, if you're a fan of that podcast, you will listen to it all the time and it will be incredibly grating. Um, so I, I think that there, there's probably more depth which we could go into in the frequency capping side of things um, in order to ensure that you're not completely bombarding people as a user. Because what I was thinking about earlier was that we normally see average frequency, but I think I mentioned earlier that you don't see the maximum frequency which someone might get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would be a really interesting insight because I, I, as Gemma was saying on the panel earlier, you know, she's hearing one of the um, dating sites all the time and it's really <laughs> inconvenient. Um, so I think that would be an interesting thing to look into, but it does need to be adapted and, and focused on who the target audience is, um, what other channels you're using, multimedia, you know, you don't want to bombard people multimedia too much as well, you need to think about an overall frequency cap as well, ideally. Um, so there's a lot to be worked into in that space, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, if anyone has any questions, wave your arm, shout oi, or anything else you need to do. Um, I was going to say, actually, on the relevancy point, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so, inclusivity and diversity mm -hmm. is obviously a really important point, and adapting your creative to be as inclusive as possible is a really interesting area of personalization, mm -hmm. which, you know, we all need to, especially government, for government, it's incredibly important to ensure that we're speaking to everyone in a relevant way. But there's a line between making it too personalized, mm -hmm. right? So that, you know, if you're speaking to someone from a certain ethnicity and you're trying to target them in a certain way and you're using their data to do that, is that the right thing to do versus is it not? It becomes down more to an ethical side of things. But if it's for the right message, it might be a good thing, so this is a bit of a challenge. I completely agree, and the thing is you just asked about creepiness and how do you avoid a creepy factor, yeah. um, which is privacy. <laughs> um, the entire, like if anyone saw Apple's ads, recent ad regarding privacy, they really illustrate the creepy factor. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting, um, but that really comes down to the data, almost like a lot of it, what we found, it comes down to the type of data that you use. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the mistakes is we fall down to always using demographic information. Yeah. But demographic information is one of those, the type of information that gets really abused and used by the industry, where that dating ad that your flight that Jim has heard, um, usually targeted for women of a certain age. Also, all women over the age of 25 have been targeted for baby ads, regardless of your life choice which makes you feel really judged by society. Like, you know what, I have to have a baby. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that in kind of information can be really abusing. You feel like you're being boxed. You feel like you're being watched. You feel like you're being heavily targeted to, which is like, you know what, this is not who I am. Mm. Unlike something which is truly relevant, which actually looks at, okay, you're a jogger, so you're a jogger. If you're showing me like running yeah. shoes, I am a jogger, that is relevant to me. Also, I don't feel like you're really invading my privacy in a way that is very emotional and very personal. That's, that's exactly it. So the way which we've been speaking about it on, at OmniGov is relevancy is appropriate when you don't look at personal um, attributes and instead you look at behavioral signals. Exactly. That's the main difference, right? So that makes it completely fair. It also makes it more contextual. Um, and ultimately, it, it feels less invasive. So I think that's the that would be my suggestion as well. Okay, um, we've just got a couple minutes left. Um, I wanted to ask you, we don't have a media owner on the panel, but if we did, how could we ambush them and say, this is what you need to give us, i.e. the advertisers and the media agencies working for the advertisers? What, what extra tools, what extra insights, what extra information do you need that we're not getting now? I've actually got a list. <laughs> uh, no, genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only because I was thinking about metrics earlier, which I thought were helpful. And lots of people have mentioned these before. So I think that this is important to bring it all together because I think everyone should be thinking about these. Um, Start writing this down. No, it's fine. I'll send it to you, don't worry. Um, <laughs> the two seconds, the minimum of two seconds thing on the, the, the gaming side was brilliant. The sound level from Christian and Ryan also makes total sense, so a minimum sound level. Um, 
I also think that on podcasting, skip through rate is mm -hmm. something which would be amazing. Um, and ideally, more information post download, but I appreciate that's impossible. But there's just like, there are so many other metrics which are available on other digital platforms. And I know that it sounds like it's, a, it's just a bit of a random list, but actually.